Good morning, folks. How are you doing? It is Sunday, the 24th day of March 2024. It's about 9.39, no, no, 9.45 in the morning uh, down here in Tampa, Florida. It's sunny. It's nice out there. Um, yesterday, I did a video talking about the uh, uh, the Crocus shooting, the Crocus shooting uh, hall center shooting that took place in, uh, just in the outskirts of Moscow Friday. Uh, uh, the numbers then were, were being reported in 115. They are now up to 144 or 43 uh, in terms of fatalities uh, and large num numbers of people uh, injured. Um, it is awful. Uh, I told you yesterday they had, they had arrested 11 people. That is still the case, even though the U.S. media tells you it's only been four. Um, they caught not only the four main perps as they were trying to leave the country, making their way to Ukraine. Um, but they also then uh, got information from them and caught a number of others. Um, they can't go into Ukraine, or they might go into Ukraine and catch the ones who were waiting for uh, the four, but that has not, or at least they haven't, haven't reported it, whether or not it's happened as of yet. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, Let's make sure we are recording. Okay. Uh, nope. Stop that. Uh -huh. um, some things we talked about yesterday uh, appear to be shaking out, which it's not really that. It's not. It's not rocket science. At this point, we've seen them do this shit with ISIS and Al Qaeda and Al Nusra and the Mujahideen and, of course. Um, 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 who were the ones in uh, uh, Boko Haram? And we, we, we've seen them do this over and over and over again. Um, uh, this is how we fight wars that we don't want to be uh, uh, held accountable for. This is how we push regime change. Russia has come out and stated that this insistence from U.S. media and from the politicos and the uh, military and intelligence assets in the United States claiming that this is a false flag. Russia's claiming this is a false flag when they say that it's ISIS-K who's taken responsibility for it and carried out this act because for some reason they don't like Putin. Um, turns out that's not really a false flag. It's more like a confession. It's a confession because there's a long history of us being already proven as having been uh, in the business of supporting ISIS. And specifically, we'll talk about ISIS-K. I talked yesterday in the video about ISIS and how ISIS helped us out with the beheading videos in order to help fucking Barack Obama justify to his uh, wannabe change crew uh, fans uh, that we had to go back in and start attacking in Iraq again. Um, so, of course, the beheading videos came out. And then, of course, we used ISIS um, as a destabilization campaign in Syria. Um, well, uh, We'll be more specific today with ISIS-K or ISIS-Corazon, uh, as it's called. Um, we'll be more specific with that today. Because I wrote an article um, citing a bunch of New York Times and CBC and uh, uh, a number. And then ultimately, um, uh, Bill Van Auken from Wash... Uh, uh, Jesus Christ... Uh, World Socialist website uh, from 2001. Um, I draw, draw extensively from these individuals, these, these entities and individuals, uh, to show you that um, we are ISIS-K, and anyone saying it is ISIS-K uh, are basically saying and confessing that, yes, we in fact did this. ISIS-K or former ISIS-K 
members who were flown out, the ones that weren't left as a stay-behind army, as in Operation Gladio, to destabilize the Taliban in Afghanistan, uh, the ones who were flown out, the thousands, quote, thousands of operatives um, that we were using in Afghanistan, terrorists, many of whom were then sent off to be um, refugees in other places. Um, but some uh, were deliberately stationed in places nearby, in places like Turkey, um, and of course Syria, and of course Russia, uh, to be used like a, I guess you would call it a sleeper cell. They were called the zero unit in Afghanistan, and I don't know what they call them now. But when you think about what the individual, the one guy in the video, and I'll post a link down below, uh, which will link you there to see the video himself, yourself, who's being interrogated, uh, quite tamely, by the way, by the FSB, uh, he admits that he just received the equivalent of what basically works out to be $5,200 payment, but a promise of $5,200 payment. Uh, via some contact through Instagram. Um, he got half of it. Uh, it paid half up front and then half when he gets out. So whatever CIA or DIA or fucking NSA or whatever organization that did this, uh, special operations, whatever, whatever organization, not special forces, special operations, whatever organization did this, Mossad, Whatever organization did this, MI6, whatever organization did this, uh, the contractor that they hired to hire these guys uh, to carry out this destabilization attack this past Friday, uh, that guy proper got to pocket, uh, I guess, 10000 the equivalent of $10,000 himself because he only paid half up front to all four and all four were cart, so I guess he gets to pocket the other $10,000. That's how your tax money is being spent, by the way. Um, another thing, so here's the first takeaway. I'm going to read the article. I'm going to keep this video short, not another hour-long audio video. You can you know, promise you that. I'm just going to read the article for you. But I want you to have two takeaways from this. The first takeaway is the United States, by claiming it was ISIS-K, is actually confessing to this crime. Because we are ISIS-K. We created ISIS-K. We use ISIS-K. And ISIS-K only attacks those governments or those individuals that we want them to. That we also don't like, by the way. I'll show you a quote from a general in the United States who said uh, not too long ago, he was talking about, you know, oh, we, we see a rise of ISIS-K and their ability to attack outside of Afghanistan. This could be a problem, uh, but we don't foresee them attacking inside the United States. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> so we are ISIS-K. So that's a confession. That's the first thing. It's not, you know, we're putting it off on ISIS and, oh, my God, it's the Taliban. Oh, my God, it's ISIS. It's al-Qaeda. It's Osama bin Laden. But that's the second thing. And the second thing is this. It will not be long before there is another ISIS-K attributed attack. And my guess is it will be against a Western target, possibly even here in the United States. And that will be used to justify a lot of things. The communication will go through on Instagram. Ergo, Instagram must be shut down, like the, you, 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 the European Union just did with Instagram over this one. Or the communication went through fucking WhatsApp, or the communication went through fucking uh, uh, whatever it is that they want to fucking... Uh, TikTok. So TikTok must be shut down. Either way, they're going to clamp down on the fucking internet as a result of it. But also, um, most importantly, it will get them, it will, it will allow Biden the cover to go back into fucking Afghanistan and to uh, bomb the Taliban out of fucking existence 
and then to replant the poppy fields and to get the Afghanistan pop, uh, uh, production of the world's heroin supply up from 0.5% where it is now to 98%, where it was right about the time when uh, the Taliban in Afghanistan kicked the U.S. and the CIA the fuck out of that country. <coughs> There's a lot of money to be made in this. A lot of black ops money, a lot of un un unaccounted for money. You guys may or may not know this, but a number of nations, including Iran, China, and Russia, all complained uh, once the heroin supply was, was kicked back up after the Taliban was removed from power in, 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 in Afghanistan in 2000, in late 2001. Um, they complained because uh, they said there was a main line, there was a fucking uh, expressed fucking effort to funnel heroin to China, Russia, Iran, places like that, in order to destabilize them. And they were pissed off about it. And they had evidence to back it up. This is like the opium wars from the way back in the day. We want back in Afghanistan. Our business interests want back in Afghanistan. They want that trans pipeline, trans Afghan pipeline set back up. And so it's my guess that what's going to happen is there's going to be another attack. Um, and that will prompt the U.S. administration to say, listen, the Taliban's all well and good. We don't want to have to do this, but the Taliban can't control ISIS-K. So we have to go in there and do it. And that'll give him the justification. That's what some of them are trying to get. Now, I've got to, uh, listen, in terms of, again, I showed you this the other day. I'll show it to you one more time. I've got a lot of history writing about fucking ISIS. I know ISIS. I know Rita Katz. I know ISIS. I know a bunch of this shit. Um, and if you wanted to just do a video or do a talk one day, let me know in the comment section and I'll show you all the shit we know. I can't show you all of this in one video. That'll take like 16 hours. But uh, it'll t I can show you a good, a good bit of it. Uh, history of fucking ISIS. And what ISIS is. Um, ISIS goes full retard. <laughs> this is 2014. The children. Oh my God, look, the children. The children. Won't someone think of the children? The children are ISIS. Yes, boys and girls, the children are ISIS. ISIS were using the children. Won't someone think of the children? They staged this stupid bullshit. This kid's like carrying a fucking bazooka. Taking pictures of it, like, oh, he'll be scared of this. Oh, my God, we're so terrified. This is 2014, folks. This, again, is justification to help fucking Obama stay and fucking keep bombing fucking Iraq and Syria. No one said jack shit about these kids who were actually holding guns that actually fucking worked. I wonder what the difference is. Gee, I tell, tell, what's the difference between these kids? I don't know. Hmm, you go figure. Uh, but then, of course, it ended the stupidest way possible with Putin's tiny little army <laughs> when they were demonizing Putin. It's Putin, damn it. Uh, and here we have uh, an early one of the earlier uh, articles I did on Rita Katz. She will factor into this and her site intelligence group. She will factor into this. Uh, quite a bit in a few minutes here. I'm going to read this article and that'll be it. And that'll be, you can get on with your Sunday. This is from 2015. But I covered her before that. Uh, she was warning of further storm of attacks via site intelligence group. Gee, I wonder what she's warning of now. Um, so, that being said, uh, just as a side note, uh, once again, whenever the, the West and the United States specifically are distracted by something like, say, Moscow, for instance, or uh, Barack Obama's first fucking uh, election, an inauguration, or his second election in 2012, whenever uh, the West are distracted by something, Israel has this odd habit of either bombing and killing people or stealing some fucking land. Turns out uh, that just happened. They just passed a thing for, what is it, 
2,000 acres in the West Bank, West Bank to be now declared to be Israel. They're just taking it as if Palestine, Palestine doesn't exist. Because, of course, they're wiping Palestine off the map. But, um, but Scott, the, the Palestine wants to wipe Israel off the map. No, not really. That's not how it works. America confessed to the Crocus terror attack by claiming it was ISIS-K because we are ISIS-K. By yours truly. The Islamic State, Khorasan province ISIS-K, is being blamed for by complicit Western media as the ones behind the attack at the Crocus City Hall concert Friday, which so far has taken the lives of 143 people. ISIS-K has been around since 2015 and has a long history of carrying out terrorist attacks, mainly, but not exclusively, against civilians, soft targets, as well as now serving as our stay-behind army in Afghanistan after our withdrawal from that country and the takeover by the Taliban. Notice what the New York Times write-up says at the end of this, that they conduct terrorist actions in order to undermine Afghan, Afghani confidence in the Taliban in hopes of regime change. Sounds kind of like what we want, doesn't it? Quote, the Islamic State Khorasan, or ISIS-K, is one of the last significant antagonists that the Taliban face in Afghanistan. It has carried out a bloody drumbeat of attacks throughout the country in recent years, seeking to use the violence to undermine the Taliban's relationships with regional allies and to portray the government as incapable of providing security in Afghanistan, experts say. New York Times. Let me stop for a second. Also now, incapable of providing security and, com and, and containing ISIS-K as they attack in Turkey just this year, now Russia just this week, and possibly even the United States, oh, I don't know, a couple weeks from now. So how do we fix that? Oh, that's right. Joe Biden gets the cover to go in there and bomb the shit out of the Taliban and reinstall somebody and put the CIA in charge of those poppy fields. Let me continue. Now to check out this, uh, now check out this article uh, from the uh, same source published on the same day today. Notice anything fishy? Quote, less than a week ago, President Vladimir v. v. Putin of Russia claimed a fifth term with his highest ever share of the vote, using a staged managed election to show the nation and the world that he was firmly in control. Control being the operative phrase. Just days later came a searing counterpoint. His vaunted security apparatus failed to prevent Russia's deadliest terror attack in 20 years. The assault on Friday, which killed at least 133 people at a concert hall in suburban Moscow, was a blow to Mr. Putin's aura as a leader from whom national security is paramount, New York Times. Gosh, that sounds so awfully similar, doesn't it? it sounds so similar. Yep. According to the official story, ISIS-K wants to undermine Russian confidence in their newly re-elected leader and in hopes of another regime change. Coincidentally, that's exactly what we want. Quote, while the attack by ISIS-K in Russia on Friday was a dramatic escalation, experts said the group has opposed Russian President Vladimir Putin in recent years. ISIS-K has been fixated on Russia for the past two years, frequently criticizing Putin and its propaganda, said Colin Clark, Senior Research Fellow at Sufan Center, a New York-based research group from the CBC. ISIS-K has a long history, since its inception, actually, of attacking governments and individuals that are also targeted by the United States and Israel intelligence, Israeli intelligence agencies. Quote from the New York Times, quote, in the months after the Taliban seized power, ISIS-K carried out nearly daily attacks on their soldiers at roadside checkpoints and in neighborhoods that are home to the country's Hazara ethnic minority. The following year, ISIS-K fighters attacked the Russian embassy in Kabul, tried to assassinate Pakistan's top diplomat to Afghanistan, and sent gunmen into a prominent hotel in Kabul that was home to many Chinese nationals, seeking to undermine the Taliban's promise of restoring peace. And, let me stop, the connections between the Taliban and Pakistan, and the Taliban and Russia, and the Taliban and Chinese nationals. 
in China. <laughs> Doing all the shit that our CIA would love to do, but CIA can't do it because that would be an act of war and that would be bad and that would look bad for the Biden administration or the Trump administration. But gosh darn it all, ISIS-K does it for us. Hot damn, what a coincidence. Continuing. More recently, ISIS-K's attacks have grown bolder and stretched beyond Afghanistan's borders. A group killed at least 43 people in an assault on a political rally in northern Pakistan in July, and it killed 84 people in two suicide bombings in Iran in January. <coughs> Pardon me. Taliban, Pakistan, Russia, China, and Iran. These are the targets of ISIS-K IR. What a coincidence. They are the same as the CIA's. It's also sought to drive a wedge between the Taliban and major powers like Russia and China and Iran that have recently warmed up to the Taliban authorities from the New York Times. U.S. authorities who study such things warned our enemies of the pending threat from ISIS-K a while ago and then advised Congress of the matter. But fear not, they concluded, there was not much of a chance of them attacking us. Go figure. Quote from CBC, General Michael Carrillo, commander of U.S. Central Command, uh, told Congress last March that ISIS-K was quickly developing the ability to conduct, quote, external operations in Europe and Asia. He predicted it would be able to attack the U.S. and Western interests outside Afghanistan in as little as six months and with no warning. Attacks within the U.S. itself were less likely, he said. <laughs> End quote. Did I happen to mention Turkey? Yeah, that's right. ISIS-K also hates the Erdogan government in Turkey and wants regime change them as well. They don't seem to like many Muslim leaders, do they? Kind of odd for quote-unquote Islamists. This is from Stimson. It's an uh, intelligence, military intelligence uh, website. Quote, on January 28, 2024, mass assailants attacked a Roman Catholic church in Istanbul, killing one person. Shortly afterwards, the Islamic State, through its official Amak news agency, claimed responsibility. Turkish police detained 47 people, most central, mostly Central Asian nationals. The incident shed light on the growing presence in Turkey of, of a Central Asian offshoot of the Islamic State group known as ISIS-K for Khorasan once a large portion of the Persian Empire now divided among Iran, Afghanistan, and Central Asian states. The January 28th assault was the group's first successful attack in Turkey since January 1st, 2017, when jihadists invaded an Istanbul nightclub, killing 39 people and wounding nearly 80. Yes, that's right. You remember that 2017 thing. That was quote-unquote ISIS-K. I continued, in November of 2001, Bill Van Auken wrote about ISIS-K for the, for the uh, uh, World Socialist website. I think it would be enlightening to have a look at what he wrote back then. Quote, intelligence, agent, intelligence agents and elite counterinsurgency troops trained by the CIA and the Pentagon during the 20-year U.S. occupation of Afghanistan are reportedly joining the Islamic State Khorasan, ISIS-K. The Wall Street Journal this week reported on the influx of these U.S. trained forces into ISIS-K, citing unnamed Taliban leaders and officials of the ousted U.S. puppet regime and people who knew agents and soldiers who had joined the group, end quote. That's the Wall Street Journal citing all of these credible sources telling you that ISIS-K was actually our fucking trained fucking terrorists or what they called Z-Unit back in the day. He goes further. Quote, Among those charging that the ISIS-K is a creature of the United States is Washington's longtime puppet, Hamid Karzai, who was president in the Kabul regime from 2001 until 2014. Let me stop for a second. Are you fucking shitting me? Our hand-picked fucking puppet for 13 years the guy who ran Afghanistan came out and said, ISIS-K is a creature of the United States. Is, in fact, a branch of the Central Intelligence Agency. That's what he said. <laughs> Continuing, quote, 
In 2017, he told Al Jazeera, quote, In my view, under the full U.S. present surveillance military political intelligence, Daesh, the Arabic acronym for ISIS, has emerged. And for two years, the Afghan people came, cried loud about their suffering of violations, and nothing was done. In the same period, Karzai told Voice of America, CIA, quote, I consider Daesh, ISIS, the U.S.'s tool, he added. I do not differentiate at all between Daesh, ISIS, and America. There were numerous reports from Afghanistan of unmarked helicopters flying weapons and supplies into areas occupied by ISIS-K. At the time, the U.S. and NATO were in full control of Afghans' airspace. That, of course, is Bill Van Auken from World Socialist website. Links are below. I will post a link to this article down below this video so you can come here and look at it yourself. Let me continue. We haven't got much time. Continuing with what I wrote. Perhaps these four individuals Russia caught fleeing the scene of the crime were once considered on the CIA's list of zero units, now consigned to sporadic contract work notified by random Instagram posts. Quote, in addition to the former intelligence agencies and special forces troops that have joined ISIS, the U.S. evacuated from Afghanistan thousands of commandos of the so-called zero units that operated under the supervision of the CIA, carrying out night raids, assassinations, and other war crimes. This provides the U.S. intelligence agency with a pool of recruits for intervention aimed at provoking a new civil war in Afghanistan, end quote, or perhaps even to use as sleeper cells. They took them out of Afghanistan and they sent them off to other places, places like the United States, places like Canada, places like the UK, places like Russia, places like Turkey. People who were trained and have a history of serving as mercenaries. Indiscrim indiscriminate killing. These are valuable resources if you are special operations. Let me continue. <laughs> we'll wrap this up. In March of 2023, Voice of America, CIA, published a video by Sight Intelligence Agency, Rita Katz of Mossad, claiming ISIS-K was finally set to start attacking Western targets. That never happened, of course. And Sight is well known for finding terrorist videos like all those ISIS behead beheading videos they made back during the Obama days. Turns out they have a had a nifty video showing a bunch of idiots dancing around in what looks like Rita Katz's backyard, waving around flags and acting all goofy. And that's the image, the still from the ISIS, from the, from the Rita Katz fucking site intelligence network or intelligence agency fucking, uh, what they found. They create these videos. They create these videos. They create, they have a studio in Pennsylvania, that's where she lives, or did live, maybe New York State, now Pennsylvania. <laughs> Let me continue. ISIS-K is our creation. It serves our interest and has since its inception. Whether that be justifying the slaughter of Afghani citizens at the airport or trying to get the Taliban to let us back into the country to fight ISIS-K, this is what they do. Were the four caught, in Russia active, uh, four caught in Russia active members of the organization in Afghanistan, or rather some zero uniters on some CIA recruit list, it really doesn't matter. And the fact that ISIS-K issued a claim of responsibility also doesn't mean some radicalized Muslims attacked white folks in Russia because they hate Putin. The truth is, someone in our intelligence services ordered this attack in, in conjunction with either special operations contractors or some other foreign intelligence service. ISIS-K doesn't hate Turkey or Russia or China or Iran or Pakistan or even the Taliban. They are contractors. They are hitmen. Stay behind army just like the terrorists we hired to carry out Operation Gladio and the American Gladio campaign. One of the captured terrorists from Friday's event in Russia admitted he had no idea who was behind his being there and all he knew was he was being paid $5,000 to go there with the others that day and kill people and leave.
they only paid half up front. The CIA assets who uh, arranged it probably pocketed the rest. That's how they work. Russia thinks Ukraine is behind this or some U.S. alphabet agency pulling the strings to stir up more hostilities and maybe even undermine Russia's confidence in Putin. They say that by U.S. by us blaming ISIS-K, we're trying to deflect blame and therefore it's some kind of false flag event. The Russians, they don't understand. By blaming ISIS-K, U.S. officials are confessing their sins because we're ISIS-K. Somebody wrote, read a cat's backyard. <laughs> we're ISIS-K. By claiming it's ISIS-K, there is more than enough fucking evidence and this is just the this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, there's 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 literally well I don't have it up anymore, but there's literally fucking tons of evidence that we are ISIS. Remember when it was a conspiracy theory to say that we were Al Qaeda, we were uh, the Mujahideen, until of course all you gotta do is do the research. All you gotta do is read. But then, of course, Hillary Clinton came out, and there's a video of her in fucking Congress saying, yeah, we created the Mujahideen. We created Al-Qaeda to destabilize fucking Afghanistan and to, uh, to break up Af Af the, Af the merger between Afghanistan and Russia. It was, oh, Russia invaded Afghanistan. Bullshit. But that's why they did it. Notice we're back to Afghanistan, huh? <laughs> This is a confession. This is claiming ISIS K did this is a confession for anybody paying attention. Now, why why Russian intelligence doesn't fucking sit Putin down and say why Putin doesn't come right out and say it? I don't know, but it's clearly a confession. It's not a false flag operation. They did it. Those four individuals did it. Those four individuals should be questioned about their connection and their history working with ISIS-K. Where were they before? Were they in Afghanistan? When were they sent out of Afghanistan? Are they part of the zero unit team? What did they do in Afghanistan? What other projects have they worked on? That'll tell you who, you don't have to, you don't have to follow the money, you have to follow the motive. The motive for them is the money. The motive for who hired them, that's what's in question. That's the fact. Now, the real problem here is, is that we have to look at this for what it is. You know, I, when I say it's not a false flag, I mean, <coughs> it was these four guys and they have a history, I'm sure, of being part of fucking ISIS-K. But what is ISIS-K? ISIS-K is us. ISIS-K are our contractors. So it's not a false flag. We fucking hired them to do it. That's not a false flag. A false flag would be uh, we pretend 19 fucking guys on aircrafts with box cutters. Um, and then we claim it was uh, Al-Qaeda or you know, Mujahideen and fucking... Osama bin Laden, when they had nothing to do with it. They weren't even there. They weren't in the fucking planes. And they certainly didn't set the fucking controlled demolition fucking explosives. And they didn't fly a drone into the Pentagon. That's a false flag. These are our contractors. We just do it off the books. But just because it's off the books doesn't mean you can't fucking track it down and hold the people accountable who hired them. Okay? It's not a false flag. It's a confession. And unfortunately, if you think about it, <coughs> it might be a fucking premonition. It might be a warning. Unless they can use the attack in Russia to justify sending U.S. troops into Afghanistan, they're going to need something a little closer to home. Have a good Sunday, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.